Hey folks, this is Johnny and welcome to another home studio trainer show. And uh, this one is, I'm going to get some people that disagree with this, but I really feel that this is something important, especially if you're done with the song and you're going to send it out there. All right, so turning off the tempo data on Mixdown. Now, this has nothing to do with shutting off or uh, turning off tempo uh, actually in the song or anything like that. It's just an option in the Mixdown window uh, that I think that can uh, screw it up, especially if you're sending a track to a mastering engineer who is using software uh, that has... Um, that has a tempo option or a grid that it's going to lock to automatically. Let me show you what I mean. So let's go. Oh, before we do anything, <laughs> if you could like this video, subscribe to my channel and uh, enable notifications so that you know when these crazy things are going to start. And uh, if you guys could also leave a comment at the uh, below the video uh, when this is done and let me know your opinion on all this stuff. All right, so here we've got a song. I'm not going to play it. It's the same one I've been using for the last, like, 20 videos. Um, when you actually have a song that's finished and you actually go to Mix Down. Now, I actually have a button for Mix Down here. You can actually just go to the, what is it, the song menu and say Export Mix Down. But I have this button here, and it's going to open up the same window. So in this window, there is a very important thing to check here to make sure. Well, not only the type of file that you want, if you're going to do a WAV file, yeah, you can choose all of these options here. And then, of course, you want to choose the range. Um, I'm using the loop. I always use the loop range when I'm actually mixing down a song. But if we go down a little bit here, Ding, 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 ding. Right, tempo data to audio file. So let me tell you why I feel this is not a good thing to have, especially if this is the final, uh, the final mix down that you're sending either to a mastering engineer or you're sending to get published. Now, if you're sending it to get published, uh, putting it up on iTunes or something like that, it isn't going to affect it at all. But by default, this is usually checked. And the only problem with that is if you're sending your song, and I just had this happen to me today, which is the reason for this video. If you're sending a song to somebody else, either to master or to add uh, or, or to audition, and you want them to open it up in Studio One. So if this is checked and you do the mix down and you send the mix down, whether it's an MP3 or whether it's a WAV file or an AIFF, what it's going to do is if the person opens up a new song or a new project, whatever you want to call it, I could, they're, in Studio One they're called songs, in Cubase they're called projects, but this also applies to some Cubase users. If you write the tempo data to the mixed down file, the song may have a tendency to snap to the tempo of the song or project that it's opened in. Now, this, it, this isn't going to happen in Media Player or anything like that. This is strictly for the DAW. So, if your song is at 130 and the person that you're sending it to opens up a song to import that file that's set at 120, the song is going to play at 120 because the file is going to automatically snap to the tempo data in the song, not the actual tempo of the file. So, so now, <clears throat> so I'm, my voice is going. Uh, so now, so for Cubase users, this may not be a thing. But in Studio One, it's by default. And that's going to happen. So you really want to leave this option unchecked. So that whatever software the song is imported into, the file doesn't snap to the tempo on the grid of the DAW. That makes sense? I hope it does. <laughs> I really hope it does. I'm not quite sure how much longer I can talk with this voice, but it, it really does make a difference. Like, so I had somebody send me a, uh, a file for me to master. I brought it in to uh, Studio One into the song page, and I didn't realize that the song was snapping to the tempo I had. His song tempo was 130, and I had it at one. I had my uh, song tempo set at 105. So I mixed down the whole song and I added a track to it. And it's like, yeah, it sounds good, but why did you slow it down? I'm like, I didn't slow it. And, and instantly I knew what happened. So I went back to the song and I'm like, yep, sure enough. 
And in Studio One, if you have a song with a tempo, like this is the song and I added a bass line to it, you can see it's a lot smaller now. Uh, if you go to the file tempo right here, you can see that I have it not set. And that's because the actual file has a tempo. <laughs> so if you do get a song with a file tempo, you can turn it off. It's easy to do. But for future reference, if you're going to send stuff to other people, you might want to actually make sure that the option is turned off in your mixed down page. All right, so I'd like your opinion on this, and please uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's not a big deal? Do you think that it's up to the mastering engineer to say, okay, um, it's his problem? <laughs> he should he should know to check that, and, that, and that's fine too. <clears throat> It's something I think I'm going to start checking more on a regular basis based on my experience today. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm really interested um, as I'm looking for my outro thing. I always have a hard time finding it. Uh, if you're actually thinking of sending some files out, I think it's a good thing to check and to turn off. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you all in the next video.